Hey, how's it going? I'm Lewis, and I thought I'd start out my DSP tutorial series with a tutorial on how to build an oscillator. And the reason for this is I remember when I was about 20, uh, I was on an IRC channel about writing video games. And I was, you know, not the best C coder back then. And, you know, I wasn't the greatest with math either. And I was talking to someone about synthesizers. And this guy is about my age, but he's going to some prestigious university. He's, you know, one of these guys really good at math and all that stuff. And he said, um, well, yeah, it's really easy to build an oscillator. And I said, oh, come on, you know, that's, Really? And he says, yeah, it's about four lines, and basically here they are. And from then, that was, kind of sucked me into this world of writing synthesizers and learning about DSP and all that. And so I thought I'd do the same here um, for other people. Um, so uh, before we begin, let's get some prereqs out of the way. Uh, I'm assuming that, you know, you already know and have some little bit of experience with language like C or C++ or Java or Objective-C or anything like that because um, we're going to use that kind of style of coding. It's going to be, you know, I'm going to do everything in pseudocode, but still it helps to have that uh, foundation. And also mathematically, I'm assuming that you're okay with basic algebra. We're not going to do any heavy problem solving here in any you know systems of, of equations, but there's going to be some light algebra, some, you know, so, you know, if you're cool with that, follow me and we'll get started. Okay, so let's begin. Almost any audio API you're gonna use uh, will give you an audio buffer to fill, you know, a buffer of numbers. Whether it is a VST you're writing or an audio unit or you're basing your program on Juice, uh, it doesn't really matter. This all kind of works the same way. Uh, so, you know, let me show you kind of what this, uh, header would look like you know for your function and I'm gonna write this in pseudocode it's not tied to any specific language right so you got this function let's say let's just call it make sound right and it's gonna give you a buffer and you know this is gonna basically be a bunch of floating point numbers and a, you know how and then you know, a size, right, uh, more or less. This is the data that's eventually going to, you get, you, that you're gonna hear. You're describing the waveform by putting numbers into this buffer. Um, and so how does that work? Okay, so every point in this stream represents an amplitude. So, you know, um, you know, let's say you got a waveform here that you're gonna describe. It's just gonna, it's gonna be a bunch of snapshots bunch of numbers and that's going to go into this buffer right that's going to be usually from 1.0 here's 0 negative 1.0 um, and what, what do these represent okay well this is a waveform and these samples represent the changes in air pressure that your speakers will make kind of in a similar way to if you look at a, a vinyl record with a magnifying glass you can kind of see this wiggle and you know in the case of, case of a vinyl record the needle travels along that groove and wiggles and that eventually produces a waveform just like this uh except the difference being that this is digital right this is you know a bunch of discrete numbers instead of being a continuous groove uh, and of course one thing to keep in mind is each sample doesn't go out to the speaker verbatim it goes through a lot of other processing before it goes down that wire into the speaker, right? Uh, so, but that's, you know, that's a complicated subject. That's not what we're gonna cover today. Um, and yeah, so generally speaking, you're gonna get floating point numbers. Some older systems, you know, let's say you've got 8-bit audio. Uh, sometimes this is in a range of zero to 256 uh, instead, but you know, we're not gonna worry about that either, right? And another thing that we have to worry about is a sampling rate and every device um, has a different sampling rate sometimes it's ar ar it's kind of arbitrary sometimes a user can decide what sampling rate to use you know for instance a compact disc is 44,000 you know over 44,000 samples a second right uh, which is pretty nice um, which means that it's going to clock out over 44,000 of these points every second okay 
and you know the sampling rate kind of det it determines the fidelity more or less of your sound uh, you know higher is it's not always better but you know it, it can be <laughs> it's, uh, it's a very complicated much argued about subject uh, again another thing that we can cover later um, but okay let's let's stop with this and decide you know or figure out what we have to do to produce a tone right the first thing we should do is figure out when we say tone what do we mean and you know you're gonna say well that sounds easy you know that's just you know like a beep or a sine wave or something that's a tone but that's we need a better definition than that right um okay a tone is a sound that your brain perceives as a pitch and the reason it perceives it as a pitch is because you're picking up a pattern that repeats so many times a second okay this is in contrast to noise which has no discernible pitch um if i take this pattern that i drew out here and i just repeat it so many times a second you'd hear a discernible pitch but if it's just different every time um then your brain just goes oh that's noise uh, i hope that makes some kind of sense uh typically you know objects in real life produce noises by oscillating back and forth and you know like this door stopper or this guitar and the number of times per second that the tone repeats is measured in Hertz so you know let's say I've got the sine wave and it repeats twice in one second that is two Hertz one two per second right easy okay um, so let's dive in here uh, and start writing a function that will spit out samples into this buffer right okay so We've got this buffer, and we're going to make a loop. So from zero to the size of this buffer, we are going to say um, fill it with Whatever our position is, yeah. Let's put let's put some variables down up here. Um, so let position equals zero, starting out at zero, the beginning of the wave, and let delta. Uh, and let's fill this in later because I want to show you maybe a more uh, a nice way of thinking about this, but. So we're gonna resume here, right? No, don't worry about this right now. It's it. You'll see what happens. You'll see how this all fits together. Okay. Position equals position plus this delta, this mysterious delta variable. What could that be? And of course, we're incrementing this position. And when this position gets so high, we're gonna re reset it, right? It's gonna it was set back to zero wrap around so if the position is less or equal to one equals position minus one and the reason we do that because let's say we find ourselves at position 1.1 we don't want to set it back to zero because we'll shorten the next wave cycle. We want it to wrap back down to point 0.1. Um, and hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So what we have is a sawtooth that as we go through the buffer, we're kind of advancing this position, advancing it, reset, reset, reset. And it's going to produce something that kind of looks like this. It's a sawtooth wave. Um, and the pitch is determined by this delta. So every sample, we're incrementing our position by so much. And so how do we figure that out? So let's say we have eight samples every second, right? So here's our period of time, eight samples. 
or one second. Okay. Um, and to make it easy, let's say our tone is two cycles every second. Boom. Okay. Two cycles of our, our nice tone. Uh, this is a nicer tone than we're producing over here uh, for a lot of different reasons. Um, okay. So this two hertz <laughs> and eight cycles per second. Now this is all really unrealistic. I made the numbers very low so we can follow it very easily. Um, okay. So that means basically that if this is eight seconds, or just eight seconds, if this is eight samples and we're repeating twice every second, this means that every wave cycle is four samples, right? Um, so if you're eight samples in the buffer, you've re repeated twice. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Uh, an another way of stating it though, is that for every sample, how much do we have to advance to meet this goal? Well, we have to advance um, one quarter of the way through our waveform. And how do we get that? Well, um, if this two hertz, we get that by dividing two times the sampling rate. Easy. And that's, that's the pattern, right? That's, you know, that always holds. So we go back here. So what is the delta? Let's say you want to produce 440 pitch. I like 440 a lot because that's middle A. Um, we would say, you know, 44, zero divided by our sampling rate. We don't know what this is and it doesn't matter. Well, for right now, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, but if you're gonna write like this, um, don't hard code your sampling rate. Don't ever do that. That's a bad idea. Um, so uh, we've got. So let's let's recap here. We've got this function. We can start at zero. Got this delta we just figured out. Um, let's say we're making a VST. We're gonna get called, you know, so many times a second. With his buffers, he's like, hey, where's this data for the waveform that we need to put out to the speakers? Um, and we're just gonna, here it is, we're gonna have a loop. It goes from one to however many samples it's asking for. Um, and the buffer of every index here from zero to the size is gonna be whatever our position is. And that's up, 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 zero, up, 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 zero. Okay, and you know we're moving the wave by increasing it here. We're wrapping it around here. Okay, cool. Um, there's a few issues here. This is not this is not a very good saw wave, and here's why. Um, there's a few things wrong with this. First of all, if we're going to from zero to one, right? Uh, the trouble with this is that the range isn't zero to one. The range is one to negative one. So one thing you can do is you can center this. Um, and you can do that by subtracting it. You know, this, this is where your algebra kicks in. Uh, subtracting it by 0.5 and then multiplying it by two, right? Um, that's not gonna give you a very good way, but at least it'll be centered. And the reason it's not, it'll look like this. And the reason it's not very good is because there's a whole topic of aliasing in digital audio. This is a hurdle that you don't have to worry about in the analog realm that rears its ugly head a lot in digital. And what that is, is that what you see isn't what you get. Because of all, because you know, I said that you can fill a buffer with numbers, but that's not what you really get to your speaker. That's kind of somewhat describing it, but it's not the whole picture. Um, and there's a whole sampling theory that talks about why it is that you can describe a perfect saw wave or a perfect square wave, and that's not what you get out. Uh, but that's another topic for another time, and I hope this was kind of maybe got you started thinking about sample processing. It's not an easy subject, um, and especially if you're a beginner programmer. If you're an experienced programmer, you probably could follow this pretty well. Uh, don't worry if you've got to rewind and do it again. And I, I would really recommend diving in and writing a program just from scratch here. And one of the easiest ways of doing that is instead of saying, oh, I'm going to make a VST, um, I've made programs a lot actually, especially earlier on, where, and this is good for debugging, where instead of waiting for the call, you have main, this main function and you fill a file. You just say you fill like two seconds with the saw wave. Uh, you can do that by just opening a file 
and dumping floating point numbers into it and then opening it with Audacity. And Audacity will ask you, uh, you know, what format is this in? Because there's no header, it's not a wave file, it's just a bunch of numbers. And you tell it what it is and you get a saw wave in Audacity from that. And then you can play with it, you can see what changes um, you're making your program really affect the wave. Um, but yeah, uh, please start playing around with this stuff and uh, hopefully I'll have another lecture up soon that will uh, maybe be on aliasing or maybe some mathematics. Who knows? Well, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.